So this is another crazy experiment. I've decided that I need to do a little experimenting to try to discover what type of insulation that I'm going to use in the van. So this is this is just really crazy, okay? But I made this little box and this steel is going to represent the steel wall of the van. And I'm going to actually take this piece, take the door off my mini fridge, and put insulation in here right up against what would be the van wall and see where the condensation forms. Uh, I'm definitely not going to use spray foam and I'll, I'll get into why uh, later. And, but do I use polyiso? Do I use something in between the polyiso? Do I try attempt a vapor barrier or do I just let it breathe? So I'm going to do an experiment on my own to see if I come up with a, a decision on what's truly better or not. Uh, it's a little crazy, but I got time and we'll see what happens. Anyway, so it's nice to have lots of scrap wood around. And uh, this stuff here, this Lexel stuff, it says it sticks to almost anything. They're not kidding. It's great stuff. And uh, it's got these screw-on nozzles. I constantly use the old nozzle because I'm always thinking that I might want to cut these nozzles for different thicknesses if, uh, if I ever need them. So I kind of hang on to the new one, keep reusing the old one. So we're going to seal this thing up so that we got no air coming out of it. What's my objective? I want to find out where the condensation forms. How close does this need to be to the skin of the van so that the condensation forms on the outside and not in between the insulation and the van? I'm going to try it with polyiso and XPS and see what the results are. So I may get nothing from this experiment or it might become very valuable. I have no idea. But I've got the time and resources, so I'm going to give it a try. So, we'll wait. I'll start my stopwatch, wait about a half hour, and see what happens. It's pretty hot outside. Central Florida, usually pretty warm. So. Be back in a few minutes. Okay, after a half hour, and during that half hour, I moved the fridge into the shade so that the moisture would not evaporate instantly off of the surface. So, removing this, I can feel it's wet here, and you can see condensation. I think you can see that on camera. It's wet there. Now, this is just pushed up against that with these insulation pins. So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to seal this off with plastic and try it again. And then I will dry this. I will also glue this in up against the surface and see if that helps with it sealed off. And we'll see what happens. But right now, the moisture is still against the metal, even though this is pushed up right against it. And that's, that's not good. If that's going to occur, I want to have a space between this and the insulation so that that moisture could drip down and drain out of the van. At least that's my idea right now. You never know what's going to happen. So, I'll work on that, and we'll see what happens next time.
another 30 to 40 minutes has gone by and the refrigerator has been outside in the shade I put this plastic vapor barrier and sealed it in and now I'm going to tear it apart and we're going to see where the condensation is I don't think I would want a vapor barrier in my van because that means the moisture is going to be up against that. A lot of people use Reflectix and create a vapor barrier, but that's just going to trap that moisture in between. And it's got to be absorbed somewhere. And it be absorbed in the wood, and that's a problem. So. It's a little damp. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. Cool. Yeah, that's where most of the moisture is. Most of the moisture is between. Yeah, that's 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 wet. So the metal surface. Is, is, is very wet. Now, can I get that to move to the outside of this? Sorry about that, the battery died. So, what I was saying, if I glue this right up against this surface, wow, that's really wet. If I glue it right up against the surface, can I get that condensation to move away from what will be the metal wall of the van to the inside wall here and is that an advantage or not I'm not sure but I'm gonna dry this off and I'm gonna get some material and glue this up against that piece of metal and we'll see what happens next I don't know if I'm learning anything or not but this will help me make some decisions I think I think. We'll see. Onward and upward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this polyiso and I'm going to coat it with this Lexel. This is amazing stuff. Highly recommend it. Um, it's ultra clear. It remains uh, elastic over its lifetime. It's UV protected um, or UV resistant. I've used it on my roof. That's where I first discovered it when I was, years ago, I was putting some roof shingles on and I had that black type material. Problem was I was starting to get it in the wrong places. So when I had to replace a few shingles because of a windstorm, uh, that black stuff was getting everywhere and it looked terrible. So I went and found this and it's ultra clear and uh, made it look like a much better professional job than it probably really was. So ever since then, I've always had a tube of this. When I get halfway done with one, I always buy another one. This is good stuff. So I'm going to use this, and we're going to coat this and try to push it up against this and seal it as best I can. And then we'll see if we can get that condensation to move from the skin to the outside of this polyiso. So give that a try. It's been more than a half hour where I've had this sealed up, sitting in the same location it was before. I just moved it in a few minutes ago. And let's see if that condensation moved at all. And there. It's not wet there. So I still believe that the condensation is between the metal and 
the insulation, the polyiso insulation. So I don't think that's a solution. Yep, I can feel on these pins, even the pins are a little wet. And that's conduction straight through. Boy, you can feel that they're cold, so it doesn't take much for that coldness to move through. And there's a little moisture on those pins. That's stuck on really good. Oh yeah. Yeah, the metal's still wet. Even though that was sealed up against the metal, even with the glue or if you used uh, spray foam, it's still gonna have condensation up against the metal body. I don't believe it's possible for you to perfectly seal it up against the metal to have the condensation move to the outside. I'm thinking that what I will do in my van build is place a polyester or nylon in between the insulation and the steel wall of the van. So when the condensation occurs, there'll be some air circulation and allow it to dry. Or if a lot of condensation builds up, that nylon or polyester will allow it to drip down out the drain holes of the van. I will use these pins to put the insulation on. That way I will be able to remove it and remove the insulation and inspect and see if there's any mold buildup or any rust or anything bad. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Still thinking about it. But I think that's what's going to happen. The next test. I'm going to use this polyfill. Polyfill comes in polyester sheets and I'm going to take and place this between what would be the wall of the van and the polyiso insulation and see how much condensation builds up and is held in between. This might be what I do on the van because I'm hoping that this polyfill will provide enough air space to allow air circulation and allow it to dry out through heat and if it does get soaked, it'll release and allow the condensation to drip down the walls and out of the van. So we're gonna try that. Well, now we wait and see. I'm going to let this one run probably at least an hour because the temperature has dropped outside a little bit because it's getting late in the day. So stay tuned. The final test of this insulation. Took some of this polyfill and put it behind the polyiso insulation, sealed it up, and waited a couple hours to see what would happen. Condensation, of course, is not going to form on the outside of the insulation. We already knew that. And not enough, not enough condensation produced for it to drip because the refrigerator worked really well. Right now, the condensation on here, it's actually frozen. All right? But 
as I wipe it, it's, it's moist, right? And in some areas, I got this thing turned down really low, maybe too low, the drinks inside freeze. So the condensation is still forming on the metal, but when it would warm up, hopefully with this polyester in between, that condensation would have enough air circulation to dry, or if there was so much condensation, it would go down the walls of the van and out the drain holes in the bottom. So right now, that's my thinking that I'll use a polyester on the wall and then polyiso insulation. The polyiso insulation has the greatest R value. Thin solate is much lower. Thin solate is a lot easier to work with than the polyiso. You need to cut the panels out. You got to fit perfectly. But I've got the time to do that. And I think I'm going to like the result of a much better insulated van. So you have to make your own decision, do your own experiments. <clears throat> this uh, concept of insulating, whether or not to have a vapor barrier, has always been very controversial. And I think I've come up with a solution for myself, which would be no vapor barrier. The polyester in between the polyiso insulation and when I put my walls on I will use headliner material so that the van will be able to breathe and will be able to evaporate any of the condensation that appears or forms on the walls of the van so that's what I'm going to do and if you follow along with the rest of the videos you'll see step by step how I do it Please subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and I'll see you on the next one.